What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Martine Myers, coming in with another video. Another video on helping women heal with the condition of uterine fibroids. Now, today, we're going to talk about the daily stresses of uh, that we face in women's health that contribute to the fact that they stimulate those fibroid tumors and allow us to have uterine fibroids. I'm going to highlight on a lot of different stress factors for you guys to be able to identify those stress factors. Now, the daily stress that we're going to talk about is the one related to work at this present time. Um, so we're going to highlight on too much responsibility. Too much responsibility basically means that you are always pushing forward, pushing really hard to do your work. Um, you are trying to meet with many different demands, referencing your job. You pretty much function under pressure um, to abide to your responsibilities at work. And you also worry a lot about getting the work done and doing it well. Okay, so that is something that puts a strain on you as a woman and a lot of these a lot of these related um factors put a strain on your health as a woman but it also puts a strain on the uterus because everything that we feel we feel it in our gut everything that we go through as a woman basically whether it's anxiety whether it's fear whether it's worry even if you feel good, it always resonates within the womb, which is part of the, which is the uterus area. And um, with that being said, if you're experiencing negative vibes for a very long time, you're going to feel it in the womb. And those particular things actually go upon basically stimulating the growth of tumors. And that's how women do end up having fibroids as well as many other things that could happen within the womb area. Moving forward, the second factor is time urgency. Um, you worry about getting to work on time. You rush. You actually um, feel like there's not enough hours. There aren't any enough hours in the day for you to complete your work. So you're always pretty much on the go and kind of like moving against time. That's really what the time urgency is all about. And a lot of times um, all those pressures, all those thoughts and all those mishaps do resonate within your womb. And that creates another opportunity for um, tumors to be stimulated within the womb and also start growing. And that's how a lot of women end up getting fibroids. Like I said, everything resonates in the womb when it comes to women, as I had discussed in my last video. And um, we need to get a control on that and understand exactly that stress is a killer. Stress basically is like... Um, a terrible thing to undergo when it comes to women's health, when it comes to anybody's health, but we're primarily speaking about women. We have to really be careful with what we do in our lives and how we go about doing things. Uh, job instability. So if you're going from one job to another, or you are working a job and then you lost your job, or you got laid off, or you know, you're at your job, but there may be a possibility that the job is going to shut down by some particular reason. Um, there are a lot of people who actually went through that during um, the beginning of COVID, not knowing whether they were going to continue having the same job. Um, some lost their jobs. Some started working at home. So there are a lot of instabilities there are mental instabilities as well that came within that emotional instabilities that fell into the job instability. Um, 
And there was also a physical instability where basically you had to start working from home and everybody's home situation is not the best, you know, truthfully speaking. So all those adjustments definitely took a toll on many different women during COVID and it's still happening in some particular ways. Everybody is not totally relieved or have not really all find solutions to how to cope with um, the changes, you know, when your body goes through changes, basically all of those things resonate in the womb and it creates difficulty. It creates uncertainty and uncomfortability for us as women. And that's another opportunity, unfortunately, for uh, tumors to be stimulated, start growing within our wombs. And then they could turn into a possibility of uterine fibroids. Now, the next factor is job performance. You don't feel that you are working up to your maximum capabilities, maybe because of outside pressures or stress. So if you're dealing basically with um, a lot of personal issues, your job performance may not be up to par and that slows you down. If you're unhappy with your job, um, you know, if you're unhappy with your job, if you're unhappy with your job performance, you're concerned about the security of your job, that pretty much turns out to be some sort of stress factor. And it all resonates in the womb. Trust me, I've been there and I can identify to each and every one of these factors that we are discussing presently. The next one is difficulty getting along with coworkers or the boss. So if you have a boss that's extremely picky and critical, always picking on you, always coming back and letting you know basically that you didn't do something well or they told you to do something and you did it and that it wasn't to their liking, so on and so forth. I've been there. I've had those, unfortunately. I know what that's all about. I'm sure you know what that's all about too if you're going through it. By all means, the worry, the anxiety that they put you through all resonate in the womb, okay? It does not do us any good, all right? Um, you could have a situation where you have to work very closely in a tight-knit type of environment with coworkers who are difficult to get along with. Been there, done that. Working under pressure, not good for us as women, it all resonates in the womb. <laughs> it stimulates the growth of tumors. And that could, that can explain why I have fibroids and I dealt with fibroids for 21 years. It's been a journey. So difficulty getting along with the coworkers and the boss. That's not a cool thing at all, okay? So if you have that situation, by all means, uh, reevaluate. Maybe it's not worth staying at that job. Maybe you should move to another department. You know, maybe working with those particular coworkers is not good for you. It all depends. Everything is energy. If the energy does not resonate with you, by all means, do your best to try to cope with it. But just make sure that the, the more you try to cope with it, the more you try to deal with things, the possibility is that it may go into... Um, deterring your health and stimulate growth of fibroids. Under stimulation, so basically work is boring. You don't like it. There's a you're not stimulated. You're tired of the job. The job tasks are not like exciting you. You know, you're when you're at work, you're kind of wishing that you were somewhere else type of thing. You're not focused on the job, that's under stimulation, basically. So those type of things, honestly, don't go well with you because you may be on the job, you're not extremely focused. And then what happens is that your job performance is going to hurt because you're not really working up to par. And when your job performance hurts, then basically you're called in to have a conversation with your boss. And then if your boss is the type of person that's overly critical and likes to put people under pressure and they're very picky, you could understand how stressful that 
type of environment can turn out to be for you. And it could put you in a position where your anxiety could just go through the roof. You could be um, uncomfortable going to work on a daily basis and then puts you in a situation where all of those feelings are stored within the womb area and you're kind of like holding all of that within you. That can also stimulate the growth of tumors, which will turn into fibroids. Sometimes they could turn into cysts and they could turn into worse things, but we're focusing on fibroids. So that right there, if that's happening to you, by all means, please do yourself to find a new way to deal with it. Or if you have to move on, do what you have to do. Only you know exactly where you stand with your health. Another factor is the uncomfortable physical plant. So it could be the lights may be too bright or the lights are too dim within the office, wherever you work. Um, it could be too much noise in the area. Um, it could be if you have like some type of smell, chemical smell, fumes um, happening at the site where you're working. And it could be a lot of different activities, people walking around, a lot of people talking, loud radios, um, which makes it difficult for you to concentrate. That can make you uncomfortable to the point where it's frustrating. And it plays a role in many different other factors that we discussed. So if you're frustrated, you're not concentrating well, you're not understanding things well, you're not grasping well, you're not performing well at work. You see how all that all tied up together basically becomes nothing. It turns into stress, nothing but stress. And at the end is that you're actually in a position where you just feel so uncomfortable. It affects your health. You know, another factor, again, that's going to stimulate the growth of tumors, which then turns into the possibility of uterine fibroids. Now, the other area that I want to highlight on is basically when you are dealing with your spouse, your significant other, the boyfriend, the girlfriend type of thing, you know, um, you go in through a lot of different stress factors too due to changes in the relationship. So we're going to talk about hostile communication. Um, this is when there's actually like too much of uh, negative feelings, negative emotions, a lot of drama that's uh, maybe always upsetting you. You're always angry. Um, there's a lack of peace, a lack of quietness, a lack of togetherness, a lack of unity um, between the two. So definitely that can be a major problem. And then for women, we like to hold things in our womb because the womb is actually the birth center of everything for us. That's where, um, that's our sacred space within our body. And this is where we feel, this is where we actually um, think like the membrane for us. So this is where we hold DNA and everything. Um, the membrane for the women is within the womb. So all of this that I've just talked about, not having um, good conversations, you know, the hostility resonates in the womb. And the the possibility is that it's going to stimulate the growth of tumors. Um, unfortunately, I've been there. So yeah, I know exactly firsthand what that's all about. Now, you could be in a situation where it's the opposite. There's not enough communication, um, not enough discussions. It's, you have you could be someone who likes to talk about feelings, which is me. You know, I like to express myself. I like to speak the truth. I like to be able to tell people what's going on with me, what's going on inside. And then you have your partner, basically, um, who does not like to speak the truth, who does not like to speak about feelings, who tends to hold in their feelings and they're stuck in their head. And you have um, them also feeling that um, there's, a there's a lack of emotional bond. You know, you're feeling like there's a lack of emotional bond uh, between you and your partner. I've totally been there and it's frustrating. It's irritating. 
um, you actually feel like you're not actually appreciated. You know, sometimes you could feel like you're not loved by that person. Um, you know, you're feeling like that person does not understand you and they don't want to give you the time of the day. I've been there. It's not a good situation to be in. And definitely all that resonates in the womb, all the shock, all of the basically types of shocks that you receive in terms of relationships, you know, things going well, things going bad, all resonate in the womb. You they respawn in the womb area and if it goes bad, it's going to stimulate the growth of tumors, which will then turn into uterine fibroids. Now, there could be a discrepancy in communication. One person talks about feelings a bit too much, and the other person talks about it very little, or they don't like to talk about it at all. There's an imbalance, you know, in communication. That is frustrating also when you are in a relationship. And for the woman, we take things personally. You know, we're going to we think that we're not good enough. We're going to think that basically the person does not love us. They are not putting in their time to understand, to communicate, so on and so forth. And all of that thinking process, everything that you analyze and overanalyze within your mind resonates in the womb. With that being said, it could tear you apart. And of course, there's a possibility of it creating and stimulating the the growth of tumors, which going to turn into uterine fibroids. Now, affection. There may be a lack of affection on one side where one partner basically um, does not feel that they receive enough affection. And then there's another partner that basically gives a whole lot of affection and they don't think that it's not reciprocating basically they're not um receiving the amount of affection that they put out you know there's a lack of holding a lack of touching a lack of love within the relationship um you know there's a uncomfortable situation where one partner may be having to request and demand more when it comes to affection in the relationship. And that's that's a stress factor within itself, you know. And for women, it affects us in the womb. You know, we we hold that in the womb. And it's it's difficult. And once again, that will stimulate the growth of tumors, which will theoretically turn into fibroids. Um sexuality now that with sexuality it could be that there are not there's not enough sexual intimacy within the relationship um someone feels deprived by their partner or it could be that the partner demands too much of sex you know and one partner feels pressured that's a major factor um, that women deal with in relationships. And with that being said, if women are not able to perform to please their significant other, their partner, their spouse, it could be frustrating for the woman as well as their partner. And um, what will happen out of distress, the woman will hold all of those feelings all of those hurts within their womb and um, those feelings basically will turn into something negative that they capture and that can stimulate the growth of uterine fibroids, basically the growth of tumors. And that's also because like the hormones are out of whack as well, you know, and that puts us in a situation where we're just it, there's, a, there's a total imbalance in the body now when it comes to children um some of us may be a little more sensitive about kids you know about children um it could be that the children make too much noise you can't listen to all that noise or it could be that the children make are making too many demands 
on your time and you don't have enough time. You're stressed between work um, and having to spend time with your children or having to educate your children, having to be speaking to your children, you know. Um, so, and it could be that the kids don't listen. It could be that the kids do not cooperate in terms of um, you disciplining them. So all of that pretty much has a negative factor on you. And that negative factor can go about however you store it within yourself. And in the womb is where we hold a lot of what we go through as women. And with that being said, that can contribute to the growth of fibroids. Now, organization. Like, the house is not organized. Um, it's messy. Uh, the chores are not done. Or they're basically half finished. That frustration, that incompleteness, you know, that contributes definitely to, to stress, which then theoretically turns into a factor where everything is stored in that womb membrane or DNA membrane. That's where it is for women in the uterus. And it could stimulate the growth of fibroids. So time. Time could be you have too much time at home or you don't have enough time you know, to get everything done. Um, so it could go in two ways. It could be that you have too much time on your hands and you're unorganized, so you don't know what to do with your time. Or it could be that you have less time on your hands and you're going against time with a lot of things. You're rushing, you're stressing, you're yelling, you're, you know, looking at other people to be like, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? But meanwhile, the issue is that you're the one who's stressed about your time factor, the time factor that you're dealing with. And that is something that um, women go through in general. A lot of us don't like to be late. A lot of us don't like to, um, we don't like to be late. We don't like to be frustrated when it comes to time. We don't like to wait on people. We like to be ready and ready to go. And that's it. And like I said, it could be very frustrating to the point where it could get to a point. It could be very stressful, you know, depending on how we deal with the situation and, and, and how we confront the situation, how we receive the situation. Responsibility is the next factor. Um, some of us need to be able to request for help. It's not easy for women to ask for help, especially when it's highly needed. So just being open to receive help is very important. And because you don't have the ability always to admit to yourself that you can't do everything on your own, then that turns into um, a stress factor. And that stress factor could then turn into something totally negative, which will then um, stimulate tumors, which can turn into fibroids. It could be um, another way around with responsibilities. You could put too much time, too much demands on, um, too many demands on your time and your energy, where you're trying to just do way too much for yourself. I know my mother to be one of those people. I used to be one of those people, but after 21 years of five boys, I had to give that up. That whole working under pressure thing, uh, stressing, frustrating, you know, being frustrated, being so concentrated does not help at all. It does not help at all. It's not worth the journey, to tell you the truth. And those are certain things that you, I had to learn to give up. You got to give those things up. You got to let go. You got to relax. You know, sometimes you just have to close your eyes to certain things. And 
That's something that I had to adjust to and I had to learn. But however, if you don't adjust and you don't really learn and you take it upon yourself to basically keep trying to take out all the responsibilities, sometimes you take out the responsibilities of other people, then that could be a stress factor on you and it could turn out where it's going to stimulate the growth of tumors within your uterus and then you could end up getting fibroids or many different other things that are even worse than fibroids. So now we want to get into the emotional state. The emotional state basically is where we get full of emotions, we're in our feelings and so on and so forth, you know. Um, when your anxiety is too high, too much anxiety, you worry too much about every little thing. You're constantly worrying about what can go wrong. I would say a lot of families are like that. A lot of black families, a lot of Caribbean families are like that where we are raised to a point where we think about many different possibilities, but we also raised to a point where we're constantly thinking about what if, you know, that what if. And it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be a what if situation. It could just, you could just move on from where you are. We don't need to have what if scenarios. It's like you're always trying to create some type of cushion just in case something were to go wrong. And that's the wrong way to go about it. Um, thank God for self-development classes that has helped me for me to understand that what ifs cannot be part of my everyday, you know, because it only creates anxiety. And that's something to really quench. That's something to let go of and, you know, not allow yourself to be caught into that because you'll be full of emotions. You'll be ready to flip all over the place for no apparent reason. All that can be controlled. Just control those emotions. Um, victimization, where basically you're looking at everybody and you're looking at everybody and you feel that everybody's taking advantage of you. You're that one person, but everybody's picking on you. Everybody is taking away from you. You know, everyone is taking advantage of you. Everyone is hurting you. Um, everyone is pushing you to the side. You feel lonely. You're always the one getting hurt, you know, putting yourself in that victim mode, constantly thinking you're not worthy. You're not enough. All of those things contribute to imbalances. Those imbalances then are stored within the womb center for the women. And what it does is that at the end, when you carry that load, it creates very, very bad emotions. And it could turn into, the, into stimulating the growth of tumors. And unfortunately, it will turn into fibroids. It could turn into many other things but it will definitely turn into fibroids. I've been there. I know exactly what that's all about. Uh, poor self-image. When you don't like yourself enough, when you don't think that you're good enough, when you don't think that, you know, you're the best, you don't think that you're worthy, you're always finding forts with yourself. That's a major problem. You know, lack of self-confidence. That's very bad. And that can create a situation where it can stimulate the growth of tumors. And you could end up having fibroids. I'm going to tell you guys now, fibroids is, there's nothing good. It's the root of all evil. I call it that way in my book, Faces of Uterine Fibroids. And with that being said, you have to let go of a lot of negativity. You have to let go of a lot of issues that you're faced in this life. Um, my journey with Five Boys honestly allowed me to get on the bandwagon of self-love. For me to learn about myself, to learn about what my what I like, what I dislike, what's good for me, what's bad for me, you know, and then moving 
forward on that journey then allowed me to see the love I have for other people and how important people are to me. But it all started with the fact that I went through a 21 journey of fibroids that put me on a self-love journey trying to heal myself, my mind, body, and soul. Okay? Just remember that. So another factor would be being too critical. You're criticizing everything. You criticize people. You criticize yourself. Nothing is ever good enough for you. You're always finding faults about others. You find faults within yourself. You look at what is wrong with other people so rather than seeing their exact virtues. And it's constant. What's going to happen at the end of the day? You're going to end up hurting yourself by keeping those thoughts, by being too critical, by just holding on to negativity. And at the end of the day, you're going to hold it all within your womb because you're a woman. And when you hold that all in your womb, what's going to happen is that you're going to stimulate the growth of tumors. And that's one of the probably one of the reasons why, besides um, everything else, I would say women go through, a lot of women go through fibroids because it has a lot to do with your mental, emotional um, instabilities. It has a lot to do with mind, body, and soul. It has a lot to do with a lot of stress that we go through in our lives. It's not just only about the health factors. There are many different components that tie in with the possibility of getting uterine fibroids. Now, the next factor is inability to relax. If you're overly stressed out, you know, you don't know how to wind down and chill, let go, unwind. You're always wound up, you know. Um, you're always tense and restless. That's another bad factor again, which will possibly contribute to the stimulation of tumors and they will grow and you may end up getting fibroids. Not enough self-renewal. So you don't play enough or you don't take enough time to relax. You don't take enough time to have fun. You don't take any time to unwind. You're always tied up doing the same thing in the same routine every day in and out. No, in, no time to enjoy yourself in this life. Those things, honestly, are not good at all. You have never taken a vacation. You're always constantly on the go. Always. Routine after routine after routine. Those things, after a while, tend to affect you within your room. And when they affect you within your room, you already know. It contributes to the stimulation of the growth of fibroids. Feeling of depression. If you're depressed, you're in that feeling blue type of state. If you're isolated, you're tearful, you're blaming yourself all the time. You have this lack of hope. You're overly tired, very fatigued. You operate on low energy. You're always in this problem zone. Always think that everything is going to be a negative for you. And that will contribute to fibroids. It will contribute to stimulating the growth of the tumors. And you may have fibroids coming from being in that state. You know, it's not a good state to be in. I've been there. I'm going to tell you guys, let go, period. Just let go, let go, let go. And if you're too angry, like whatever the life issue that faces you, you go into this upset. You find yourself being angry at everybody, everybody in your household, everybody around you, you know, at work, your friends, your spouse, your children, your clients, whatever. 
you are going to basically put yourself in a situation where you're going to get overly aggravated. And when you do get overly aggravated, what's going to happen is that it's going to resonate in your room. And when it resonates in the room, basically, it's going to contribute to the growth of tumors. So with that being said, I want you guys to understand and know that how stress affects your body. Stress affects your body in many different ways. And we need to be mindful about that. We need to be able to localize the parts of the body where stress affects you all the time. Low back pain is a major area of the body where you feel a whole lot of stress. If you're having financial problems, by all means, the low back pain is what you're going to have. If you're uncertain, you're scared, you know, money troubles, you have debt, low back pain is what you're going to have. It's going to be constant, aching, nagging, torturing pain. Once you realize that, you need to know that something is off. You're at an imbalance. Check your bank account. Check your credit cards. Check your money, okay? If you're broke, constantly broke, not being able to pay your bills, lower back pain, you will have that. By all means, you can do the research online, Google it. The information is there. Pelvic area is another area where we will carry, like I said, within the womb, we will carry a whole lot of guck, a whole lot of negativity, a whole lot of nonsense. And carrying those things are not helpful to us at all. Okay. And those things contribute to nothing but negative negativity when it comes to our body. And you can be ill because of that. If you're having your, your stomach muscles are tightening, you know, you're feeling sore in that area. All those things are related to stress. Um, your thighs are contracting. The calves are contracting. Um, muscle spasm in those areas. All related to stress. That's negativity. Chest pain related to stress, negativity, shoulder pain, um, neck and throat. You feel like your neck is closing. That's your chakra, your throat chakra that's closing. Your neck is tightening. You feel pressure. You feel stress tightening. That All that is um, related to stress, to negativity, to things th that your body is going through. You know, things that your body is not resonating with. Um, you're at an imbalance. A headache. I used to go through headaches all the time, never understanding exactly that we're not really supposed to have headaches. And when we do have headaches, it's a sign by the body telling us that something is wrong. It took a long time. But finally, when I realized that's what my body was telling me, I learned how to get grounded. And once I got grounded... Believe you me, I started having less and less headaches to the point where I do not get headaches anymore. If I were to get a headache in this time right now, I will automatically check to see what is it that I've done? What is it that's bothering me? What is it in my environment that's making me unhappy? I'm not going to go and first take any uh, pills, over-the-counter pills. Because I need to evaluate and see exactly what may be going wrong. What is creating an imbalance within my environment. Once I identify that, I would rather light a candle to free myself, my mind, and release myself from the pressure. As opposed to taking some type of uh, headache medication, you know or ibuprofen or type thing, you know, I would rather do that. And if by all means, it, when I do that, if nothing works, then 
the pills, you know, the medication, over-the-counter drug will be my last resort, okay? Um, if your teeth are grinding, that's related to stress. You're grinding your teeth. That's related to stress. Eye strain. That's related to stress. All those things are related to uh, tension that you store within your body. This is what you're holding within your womb, what you're holding within your mind, your brain. All of these things, you're carrying them, literally carrying them with you day in and out. All of those things rapidly turn into muscle, muscle tension, okay? And you have to learn to release the muscle tension. You have to learn to release those negativities. You have to learn to let go of whatever it is that you're carrying because you're carrying baggages, baggages, a whole bunch of baggage. And you just have to unload, totally unload. So with that being said, if you understand everything that I've discussed throughout this video, you will know that carrying burdens, carrying negative thoughts, Sitting there re-examining on what went wrong as opposed to focusing on a solution, you know, focusing on negative thoughts only, total negativity all over the place is not to your advantage. If you want to free yourself and relieve yourself from uh, fibroids, you have to let go a lot of things that you're actually doing, you know. It's a sign for you to understand. There are signs for you to understand exactly that you need to relax. You need to basically learn how to let go, how to how not to be frustrated, how not to be so critical, how not to be picky, how to be open to receive. You know, it's a life adjustment, but it's all about self-development. And that's where the self-love comes in. You really have to take it upon yourself to love yourself inside and out just the way you are. When you look into the mirror, you have to just be able to be like, I love you just the way that you are. I accept you just the way that you are. I embrace you just the way that you are. I enjoy you just the way that you are. God made you perfect, whole, and complete. You have to look at yourself in the mirror to say, I'm happy with being the way God created me to be because it is what it is. And this is it. Okay. Once you start to get to that point where you're able to say these things without chuckling, without a doubt, really, you're on the road to freeing yourself you're on the road for you to embrace yourself as perfect whole and complete you're on the road of self-love you know and you're going to start not only relaxing but also seeing love all around you and you will start attracting love but like they say it starts with you you have to start by facing yourself in the mirror and stating, affirming, communicating how much you accept and love yourself for who you are and the way that you're made and the way that you're built. So that was my take on identify the daily stress evaluations for us to identify as women the stress factors that contribute to uterine fibroids. Thank you all for being with me throughout this time. I know that it's a bit much. It's very a very high, you know, impact of information. But I want to take the time to introduce the book to you, which is Faces of Uterine Fibroids. It's the award-winning book that we're here on, okay? And this is the reason why we have this channel, because we're bringing awareness to faces of uterine fibroids. I want to continue for us to be in this conversation, continue to have this dialogue, and for us to continue helping women heal. 
Thank you once again. This is author Martine Maya signing off and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.